What is up guys, Bob Gar here. I'm going to play some Eldrazi and Taxes in a uh, friendly modern league. Hopefully it will go okay. Hopefully I correctly chose Eldrazi and Taxes. I actually clicked through that screen pretty quick. Um, if I didn't, this is going to be a weird video. I'm probably playing some jank deck. Oh, no, I chose Eldrazi and Taxes. Good. That's the one I want to practice. I bought it in paper. Ooh. Oh, what happened? It said found match and somehow I lost it. I guess I just have to do that again since I didn't actually accept the match. That's fine. League ends in two days, so I gotta play through this pretty quick. I didn't really see uh, League ended so soon. Maybe I should not have joined it. Match found! We did it! We did it! I don't think I'll have any trouble finishing it in, in those two days. Yeah, I'll go first. Right, good luck. This looks like a keeper to me, so I will say keep. Not the most powerful deck uh, in hand that I've seen, but has turn two plays. I need to decide between Tidal of Sculler and Dark Confidant on turn two. No turn one plays a little unfortunate. Flicker was not the worst against some decks, although not super good with this particular hand. Alright, land and then pass the turn. See what he's got. If I don't think he has removal, and I think he's going to be a little slow. Dark Confidant could be good. If I think he's going to be fast or combo-y, obviously I just want to slam a Tide Hollow. Okay, probably... Yep, that's, that's the deck I thought it might be. Well, I think that deck is going to be pretty fragile to combo disruption, potentially. So I think that's the right thing for me to go for here. Pat the Exile could be good against him later. I can play any of these at any time, no reason to take the damage from caves here, so I'll just Tide Hollow. Alright. See what he's working with. Lightning Bolt. Wow. So the problem is I can take Goblin Lore. He has a bunch of relatively good cards. Lightning Bolt's the thing that kills my guy. The problem is if I leave him with Lightning Bolt, it does slow him down, but not by that much. She has a lot of those search effects. Exiling Faithless Looting is slightly tempting. I, I think the search effects are too redundant. I think I just have to let him keep him and take the Lightning Bolt. Or I could take... Nah, I think Lightning Bolt makes the most sense. That's that's a strong hand for him. That's a, that's a very good hand. Uh, Path is going to be good against one of his aggressive creatures probably, but this Flame Blade is going to be very big here. He's probably going to Faithless Looting plus Burning Inquiry. And that's going to be plus three, yeah, plus a lot basically. I want to be able to hold Path up and play down like Dark Confidant or something, but yeah, yeah the play was what I thought. I don't think leaving him with Path was right either though, just because, you know, obviously just, or not Path, but Lightning Bolt because he can just Lightning Bolt my guy. Um, I don't think this is a good matchup for us in general. We do have some sideboard against it, but in general, this is a pretty hard one. A lot of decks, Dark Confidant is very strong against. Probably at its weakest here just because this deck is so fast. He did this in a really weird way, because now he doesn't get Black Blood Gas. I mean, I'm sure he'll have a lane next turn, so it doesn't matter, but he could have gotten Blood Gas on the board this turn, which would have probably been better for him. I also shouldn't get too attached to my hand. He might Burning Inquiry. It looks like he's not going to. He must have something else he wants to play. Well, I can't block it anyway, so I'll take you take three. Could have done three more if he wanted to uh, Burning Inquiry there, so I'm a little surprised, but I guess that's fine. No, oh, he just passes to me. Seems okay. More land is not what I was looking for. I think I play down... Uh, it doesn't really matter which one of these I play down. I'm going to play down Ghost Quarters, play down Dark Confidant, and so if I want to, I can hold both back to block. I don't think it's worth it given that I have Path here, 
So I think I'm just gonna get him for damage while I can. He didn't actually end up doing too much to me, so it's not like my damage looks too bad. And I'll just be happy holding up path. I might just path this guy, which doesn't feel great, but probably the right thing to do. Okay, he gets bad blood ghast. It's not too surprising. Should have done that last turn, like I said, then blood ghast would have been able to swing in this turn, would have been good for him. And he gets to decide how to play this. I mean, he has a Flame Wake Phoenix, which he can't use yet, but he can if he wants to. Uh, oh, so he has Bolt to get back Bolt. Sure. I mean, that's good. That's a, that's what you call a good draw. And then he bolts my other guy. Or does he just let me keep him? Because I would be happy to keep this. No, he bolts the other one. So he used both his bolts. All right, sure. So I guess he doesn't get back Flame Wake Phoenix here because he's not going to have enough stuff on the board too. Breaks that, sure. I mean, he could... Um, discard your hand, draw three cards at random. I could path in response. I think it's worth it. I'm just gonna path this. I mean, you can get in for two damage next turn with Bloodgast, I guess. Okay. I literally, well, not very different than what I would have had otherwise. Don't get to play both of these here. Let's play Tide Hollow. Uh, I guess if I want to play Flicker Whisk, I'm going to have to Ghost Quarter my own land. Well, I get to take the only one of those he has. Does he have one in the graveyard? I think he does. So he could next turn uh, Faithless Looting. He only gets to keep one card, but it could still be good for him. I think now I just pass. Um, need to hit something, but he didn't actually end up doing that much to me there, so that's fine. So attack short, gets in for two, I'm not blocking that. Oh, he drew one of those. I mean, that's uh, good beats. That was probably one of the best top decks he could have had. And he doesn't bother with using his Faithless Looting. I guess that makes sense. Okay, he passes turn. I mean... I'm super flooded. Um, he has zero cards in hand. He doesn't have an instant speed way to do things. This doesn't matter what I tap here. I guess maybe I should leave this in case for some reason I really wanted to use it. There's no really, there's nothing I'm going to be able to do with it. And it's like, what do I flicker with? Flicker with? There's nothing useful to flicker. So maybe this doesn't matter either. I feel like I should at least put him down. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I guess I'll flicker this. All right, got a top deck something other than land. I have a lot of lands, and not much else. I think uh, I think we could actually still win this game pretty easily if I just top deck um, Thought Not Seer or uh, what's it called? Um, the blinking one. I'm out of it today. I'm a little tired. I haven't recorded and played Magic in a long time. I mean, it's even possible playing Flicker Wisp there was wrong. I'm not sure. Hardcast Flame Wake Phoenix. Well, he's been top decking super, super well. Just the absolute best top decks you could hope for. All right. Okay, he leaves this one back. That's interesting. I guess that makes sense. Go to blocks. Don't think I block either. 
I don't want to block this one, and I can do more damage than the Flame Wake. Well, he's top decked gas. He basically had nothing in hand and top decked gas two turns in a row. I like it. That one's pretty good. And that also opens me up to be able to do other things later. White, colorless. I don't know why I did white there. You know what I should do? Why am I wasting all this mana? Wasteland Strangler. Let's kill off this guy. Get rid of... Oh, it's tricky. So I could get rid of Faithless Looting, which unlocks me, but if I get rid of Faithless Looting, he can then cast it from his graveyard, which is not super good for me. He has zero cards in hand, though. And he already has a Faithless Looting in his graveyard. I guess I'll get rid of Faithless Looting so I can flicker that guy later and get rid of something else. All right, he's trying to race me. Let's see how that goes. Oh, actually, I shouldn't F6. Turn off auto yield. Actually, I can probably just leave lane. Leaving lane main is probably fine here. All right, he goes to nine. And you can Faithless Looting trying to dig for a good card. So you can only use one. He gets in for four. I mean, it's going to put me in a hard spot, I think. I can take him to one here, though. He does Faithless Looting. That's what I figured he would do. Digging for one good card. Like one or two good cards could definitely change the outlook of the game for me. Well, he discarded two pretty good cards, so he must have something good in hand. I guess they're not that good for him, but... Oh, he found a hollow one. All right, well, that does totally change the game. That's, uh, that's really good. We need a not great card, but we need... Yep, that's what we needed. Almost exactly. All right, so that probably wins us the game. We can, we'll see here, I guess. can only activate it once, but that might be enough. Let's we'll see what he does. Um, he's at six. I mean, I guess a vault would put me in a hard position even with the flicker effect. I guess it wouldn't put me in that hard a position. I think I can get in with my one air unit. I can take two from uh, Flame Wake Phoenix. I don't think that worries me. Okay, he takes it short. He also can't really attack with that much, otherwise I can kill him on the swing back. So. I could take his last, try to take his last card from hand with Tide Hollow, but I think I'm pretty okay not doing that. to attack. Oh, we got another Flame Wake Phoenix in his graveyard. I didn't even notice. All right, I guess that puts me in a somewhat hard position. No, it's still not see it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, I should have flickered this before combat then, I guess. That's fine, though. Um, it does put me in a slightly hard position now in that... Well, we'll see what he does. Okay, goes to attacks. Attacks with the two Flame Wake Phoenixes. And anything else? And him. All right, and him. All right. Sounds good. All I have to do is not die here, so let's go to blocks. I can double block this guy if I want to. It does put me in a slightly hard position. I can definitely single block here. I can flicker a phoenix, keep myself at two, have six damage attacking in next turn. Seems fine. Okay. Okay, flicker that. I think I screwed up a little bit here. I don't think it's that bad. Like, I still think I have a pretty good chance, but this is going to take me to four, which is outside of vault range, but still pretty annoying. 
But being able to act, activate oh, drives to displacer twice to flicker with two things a turn is pretty powerful. So he needs something pretty good here. Um, like Lightning Bolt would obviously put me in, him in pretty good position because he'd have four damage on board and he'd kill my displacer. Anything other than Lightning Bolt doesn't really do it. I thought he had another Faithless Looting in the graveyard he could have broken to try to hit Lightning Bolt, but maybe he didn't think that was an out. I don't know. Uh, he played it really well. Uh, I played that very poorly, so I'm actually a little surprised that he won. Protection from black and green. This guy's a possibility. Obviously, he doesn't play green. He plays red, but he does have quite a few black creatures that these are quite good at blocking. Plus, they're good at getting in for damage. Um, probably the relics are worth it. They're not like great in the matchup, but they're not terrible. Um, anything else? Maybe Dark Confidants are a little too dangerous. Didn't seem bad there, and he did it did kind of force him to kill him pretty quick, but didn't seem great either. Wasteland Strangler is good at killing some of his stuff, especially some of the really annoying ones. I like Thought Knot. Look who seemed decent. I think uh, Thalia is good, especially because his, um, his guys can come in with haste. I like the Eldrazi Displacer there a lot. I like the First Strike Blade Splicer dudes a lot. Tide Hollow disrupts him quite a bit in, in pretty useful ways. Um, so yeah, that's going to make it hard to put all of these things in. I just need to decide if there are things I want more than these. I think these are the biggest ones. Pithing Needle's not good. Forge Tender, not particularly good. Blessed Alliance, I guess, would be okay. Just as like an anti-aggro card. Make him sacrifice one of his huge attacking creatures, because some of his attacking creatures are a little hard to deal with. And then maybe gain me four life at the same time. These are the ones I would consider. I mean, I could go down a Flicker Wisp or something for a Mirren Crusader. It wouldn't be the worst. don't think I want to go down to Displacer for it. Like, the, the Displacer was, like, what won me the game there. Um, I do think Thalia is pretty good against all his dinky mana spells. He does have quite a few... He has quite a few creatures, too, but he does need to, like, use quite a few spells to do stuff. I mean, maybe Arbiter's not that good against him. I don't care that much about him having lots of lands, so, like, the strip mine effects aren't very good. And then, yeah, he does have fetch lands, I guess, so they're not terrible. Maybe I'll go down one of these, either up a Relic or a Mirren Crusader. Let's go up a Mirren Crusader. Let's, I guess let's try it like that. That actually slows down my deck a little bit, too, which worries me. Um, this is not a good hand. I could keep it anyway. I mean, it's not so bad that it just loses, but it definitely is not what I would consider a good hand against him. The Blade Spicer could be pretty nice. He gets to blink the Blade Spicer. A couple of three, three first strikes do make it kind of hard for him to win, but it, it's going to take me a while to go there. The double Aether Trial is not great, especially coupled with three lands. I mean, the three lands are nice in that we can get to things like Blade Spicer pretty quick. I'm going to try it. Uh, I don't think it's that bad. If we draw a little bit of action, I think it's a hand that's probably going to win. But if we don't draw action, or if he has a really fast hand, I think we could also just lose. So, Street Wraith. Burning Inquiry. Wow. Got rid of two of my only action cards. He did give me a whole bunch of Eldrazi Temples. So he does have the turn one hollow one. Now, that's what that's what's powerful about this deck. That's what you call an incredibly lucky draw. And I don't have a good answer for it in hand right now. And not only was it an incredibly lucky draw for him, it's like incredibly lucky that he ended up with this in hand. It's also very lucky that he um, got basically got rid of my two good cards. I mean, he got one got rid of one good card I knew about, and this other card I was going to draw was going to be a combo here and probably just win me the game pretty much. But well, that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, this is the RNG deck. Sometimes it has good RNG, sometimes it has bad RNG. This time it's having very good RNG. It's also super lucky that he kept the Thought Seeds. He basically discarded the things he wanted to discard and kept exactly the things he wanted to keep. So, uh, yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to lose this one. I, it's unlikely we're going to win this one given the things that we discarded randomly and then obviously he just had a Thought Seeds too, which is pretty powerful. Oh, he didn't attack with Hollow One. That's interesting. I don't know if that was a mistake or not. It might have been a mistake. Um, yeah, let's tick that up. Come on, something good. If I draw another Aether Vial, I'm going to be very sad. I mean, that's the one he doesn't know about. It probably makes the most sense to play here out of all the cards in my hand, so I probably will play it. But basically, I don't get to do anything this turn, which feels pretty bad. I guess I'll just play down a second Aether Vial. Um, yeah, I mean... This is the weakness of the deck, too. I mean, I guess, the, or the strength of the opponent's deck. Basically, it's, 
his uh, Burning Inquiry almost acted as a double Thought Seize just because he happened to hit the two best cards that were coming up. And then he had an actual Thought Seize too. And so now it's in a state where I don't have a whole lot I can do. All right. Well, let's tick these up. We'll see what else he has left in hand. He might be almost out of gas. Yeah, I got basically, I got super flooded off the, the RNG there. And the uh, hits keep coming. Can't play that one now, unfortunately, because it would be, it's unfortunate because that would be a really nice one to play now. But yeah, I can't afford to do that. And I got to run out something here to slow his clock down. So not the best. I kind of don't want to lose Blade Splicer, but I might just have to double block on Flame Blade Adept. I mean, if he has Bolt, that could, I guess, stop me. I could also double block on Hollow One. Goblin Lore, sure. Gets this up to a 4x. Discards an Angler and a Faithful Suiting. That's three cards left in hand still. Uh, I don't know whether it's better to block Flame Blade Adept, double block Flame Blade Adept, or bl double block Hollow One here. He's leaving, nope, he's not leaving any of them back. All right, I think, I feel like I'm priced into blocking something, so I gotta kind of top deck super well from here on out. I think this is what I wanna do. I could see double blocking Hollow One. The thing is, yeah. This guy's like represents slightly less damage in the next few turns. I guess I'm, I can always path him, so maybe it is better to just double block Hollow One. No, let's just double block Hollow One. That's fine. I mean, maybe I should bring in my artifact hate just for Hollow One. I don't really think so. I don't think he has enough artifact stuff that that makes sense. It's part of the strength of this deck is it's like very. Okay, I think I'll do that. It's like I can, I'm, I'm double blocking one of the two. It's just a matter of which one I double block. All right, and then I need to get action here, otherwise I scoop. I've gotten six lands in a very low land deck. Both those need to tick up. If I get the right thing, I still have a chance, but I need to get the right thing. That is the thing I needed. All right, so let's pass turn. We'll see what he does. Land, sure, untapped, goes to 14. What's he got? Okay, that seems good. Anything else? Sure. Pumps up his guy. I like it. Goes to attack. I mean, I got the card I need to have any chance. All right. Okay. Well, that worked out okay, even with a totally ridiculous, very lucky draw from our opponent. I don't think we're going to stabilize, but we it looked like we were going to die this turn. I think he was thinking we were going to die this turn, and now he's like, well, that kind of sucks. One, two, three, four, five, six... There's a pretty big question of whether we tick these up. Certainly, um, Thought Knots here would be one of my better draws. I definitely want to leave one on three, but if I tick them both up, I have one on two and one on three. That does make it hard for me to play my two drop for two turns. I think I'm going to go for the upside of taking them both up. And that was, it happened to be incorrect here. I could not have known that. I mean, I think I have to pass turn and kind of keep the same game plan, unfortunately. Next turn, I can play this and keep double blink up. So that's what I'm going to do next turn. Just can't do it this turn. Um, let's see what he has. He has Lightning Bolt would be really bad. Blood Moon, non-basic lands, 
sure. All right, that's gonna be annoying for me. I guess that does kind of beat me here. Or at least makes my guy a lot less effective. Blink that. Okay. Blink that. All right, you got it. Blood Moon is in. I guess that's it. that. If he's running Blood Moons, that is a good reason to uh, change up my strategy a little bit. Sure. Get back your Blood Gast. You can attack with him if you want, but you should probably don't want to because I'll just block. Maybe, maybe you want me to block. I don't know. Uh, all right, so all of these are turned off as basics. That actually really sucks for me, uh, especially because I ticked these up. All right, now I can't play Arbiter at all. Um, yeah, that might be the game. That might be the thing that, that won it for him. All right, um, what do I do? Is there a way for me to stay alive? I don't think there is. I'm just going to scoot. We got a little flooded again. We certainly got flooded on Aether Vials. Super lucky flips from him. Um, we need to bring in some way of dealing with artifacts and enchantments. Do I actually have any in the sideboard? Maybe I just don't. I think I just don't. I have like Stony Silence to stop artifact abilities. Don't actually have any direct artifact or enchantment hate. All right, well that makes it a little hard for me. Uh, we do have the Aether Vials, which make give us a pretty good way to get around them, but they, the, they do still hurt Displacer. Um, we do have a bunch of basics in the deck, we just didn't get them that game. We don't have fetches to find them or anything. Um, yeah, I mean, in general, I didn't think that was that bad. I felt like we had a pretty good chance. I think it was just a little bit of bad luck that we lost. I think I just run it back. Um, I think we still might lose the match. I just think it's, I think it's a pretty close matchup. I started by thinking it was a really bad matchup. I think I keep this, but I think it's actually a pretty close matchup. Uh, we're, we're relying a lot on the Aether Vial here, so hopefully it doesn't have an answer to that. Um, we do have a path for whatever he does early. We don't have quite as much disruption as we sometimes have. Um, drawing a lane next turn, especially an Eldrazi Temple, would be ridiculously good for us, but probably not going to happen, but you never know. All right, maybe he has a turn one hollow one again. He's trying to, it looks like. He's down to 16 life already. He does have a land. For a second, it was like, does he actually have a land? He does. I, I suspected he did, but I wasn't sure. Thoughts he's sure. Um, this hand is pretty resilient. None of these pieces are so good that I would be scared if he took them. A path might be what he wants to take, but path is kind of, if he's not playing anything turn one, it feels a little slow to take path. Uh, he has an answer to Aether Vial, I'm in a little trouble. But if he doesn't have an answer to Aether Vial, I'm feeling pretty good. He actually takes Displacer. Displacer does give him a lot of trouble in fairness. That's not the worst take. Yeah, let's up it. Let's draw. Well, that one's pretty good too. Not yet, but very good card. Could have used, like I said, Eldrazi Temple would have been the best draw, but any land would have been pretty good for me. Um, I am going to get a little stuck. I probably have to like leave this on three for a while. But we'll see what my opponent actually has. He hasn't shown me anything scary yet. That's fine. Um, I could path him here, but I don't think I'm going to bother. I'll path him next turn if he starts to like pump it up a ton. I can play a second Aether Vial too. I think I can. I think I can afford to play a second Aether Vial. Let's do that in case it does something to the first one. I guess does make me feel less bad about pushing this one to four pretty quick so I can get down Thought Knot. And I have a, I'm kind of stuck at the three drop slot pretty hard. So I'm giving him a couple turns. He doesn't have anything useful in the graveyard yet. I could have held up path. Maybe holding up path would have been better. I just, I felt like this needed to start getting going to get these three drops online. Okay, Faithless Looting. So now he's going to start being able to construct his hand. And this guy could just do, like, if he has, like, triple Faithless Looting type effects, he could just do, like, almost 10 damage with this right away. So this is the one turn I've left him unlocked to do things. So it could, could be my downfall. could be that I did the wrong play there. Uh, it's a little hard when you're crunched on mana. The Aether Vials are what I need in order to get going. Uh, I can just block this guy outright with uh, Blade Splicer next turn if I want to. So I'm not scared from that direction, but... 
And I can also obviously pass something. That way we can get Phoenix back. And it looks like that's what he's going to do. He doesn't get him any bigger than a 4-4, which is kind of good for me. I was worried he had another of those looting effects. So I guess to do 6 damage here. That is pretty mean. Okay, it gets in short. And he also plays a second Flameblade effect. Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's tick up. Okay. Yeah, let's tick up. I'll draw. I'll draw a season pool. That's pretty good for me. Um, for a bunch of reasons. So now I don't have to path here. I could just play down something too. I guess the only one I can play down is this. That doesn't feel very good. He took the other good one to play. So I think I will just leave up path plus uh, either vial. But that means I can wasteland strangler next turn, which feels pretty good. All right, so I'm just going to pass. I'm going to plan on pathing something. I might actually path the flame wake phoenix. I'm not sure. Um, it depends on what he has to discard here. If he gets a lot of damage off discarding things, I'll have to path the uh, other one. And then my plan is Blade Splicer to block a Flame Blade. Because my, I need to keep my life total relatively high. Alright, Faithless Student to start. Lots of triggers, always yield. Don't think I have to respond to any of the plus attack triggers. Land, untapped, goes to eight. What else does he have? Something for three, blood moon. Um, I mean, in response, I guess I path one of his guys. Blood moon is a little annoying, but it's not the end of the world for me here. I actually don't think it's particularly good against me. I mean, it's, like I said, it's a little annoying. Um, I guess I get my. I have an option too of what I want to do here. Um, it could be that. I mean, I could kill. I guess I don't want to. I'd rather kill this with some kind of path effect if I. Or this one with some kind of path effect if I kill. I guess I don't have that option. Uh, it's just. I, I'm, I'm probably going to kill this with Flame Wake Phoenix. It just depends whether I want to put this into his graveyard or whether I want to. Uh, and kill Flame Wake here or whether I want to. Just to attack. Attacks with both. Um, well, I guess this is the one that does it without having to do any crazy double blocking. If I put in, yeah, let's do this. Wasteland Strangler. Let's kill this. I guess I could have killed the other one. Maybe it would have been would have been better. I'm not sure. Actually, I should probably would have been. I don't know why I didn't kill the other one. I, my thought was I can block on the ground in the future, which I do think is true. Uh, yep, I'm going to up both of those. See what I draw for turn. Flicker Wisp, that's interesting. I can't use that this turn. I could use that next turn, and it would be pretty powerful to use next turn. What does he have in his graveyard? I'm at 10. He has not a whole lot. He does have some Faithless Lootings he can use. I can take a card out of his hand with Thought Knot, and I probably will. Um, sucks that these can't be even tapped for basic mana now. I still think I get in. I don't think I want to... I think I want to race him here. He needs to... He's pretty much out of gas, and I can get a Thought Knot down next turn. I'm at 10. I just don't think he can do 10 damage to me, especially if I Thought Knot on his draw step. Um, Maybe he can. I guess this could be up to like a 5-5, five five, but he wouldn't be able to cast anything else then if he can double Faithless Looting. Um, I guess maybe then he could, if he does it once, he could put the Phoenix back in. I think I'm good. I, I should have killed this instead and taken a little bit less damage. I, I definitely screwed that up. Okay, end step. Keep draw. Yeah. Well, he knew this was happening. Let me see what you have. Okay, take your Faithless Looting, all right. He could double Faithless Looting here, but I don't think it would be that good because that would only be a 5-5. Five, five. Let's see what he does. He starts by Faithless Looting. Is there a combo of things he could do that would 
win. I guess you could draw something off of this, like Bolt or something. I mean, I think whatever, if he plays a single creature, I can always just flicker with Spit. It's up to three. One, two, Goblin Lore. Okay, so he's up to six, but now he's out of mana. He has a land, but he can't do anything with it. All right. That guy just win. I don't think he can, I don't think he has a chance. He can get in for six and take me to four. Oh, he can t get in for eight and take me to two. But still, he has nothing that he can actually do. Like, he can get me to two, two life, but if he does that, he's not blocking. He attacks with both, sure. Like, what? How's he gonna win, though? Yeah, I go to two. Sure. Yeah. Okay, sweet. We won the match. Uh, one against black, red, hollow one, even though I made some tactical mistakes. I definitely should have killed this instead of this. I don't. I, my, my fear of not being able to deal with flying was pretty big, but it's just, it didn't make sense to not kill this guy. That was totally wrong. I made a couple actually really big mistakes there. Um, but. Even with my poor play, uh, Eldrazi Tron takes out Black Red Hollow One. This has been the hot deck for a while. I've literally, I don't think I've ever lost to it with any deck I've played, and I know it's a good deck. It just, it, I've almost never lost to it. It's really weird to me, because uh, obviously it's very, very strong. And it was close. It was super close, but sweet. Well, we got there again. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. All right, we won the first match. We're going on to the second match with uh, Eldrazi and Taxes. beat some black red hollow one which is a super strong deck but i feel like i've gotten lucky against it repeatedly or maybe i just keep playing decks that are good matchups against it i'm not sure but uh, i think i did lose maybe with the burn deck against it i think i think that was true but i feel like i played against it with a couple of my decks and usually done pretty well and a match is found all right how bad can this be it will be okay hopefully Um, I think this is a keeper. A lot of two drops. Uh, Aether Vial is quite good. We can get Thalia out down turn two or Leon Arbiter if that's better. Stomping Grounds untapped. Noble Hierarch. Hmm. Could be a hard matchup. Don't have any way to get that off the board, so he's going to be ramping. Don't really know what he's trying to do here. I think I'm going to start on Eldrazi Temple. Just gives me a few more options if I top deck specific things, although it's not likely. Uh, it's probably just Caves of Coileos or Coileos. Coileos or Coileos? It is Coileos. I, whatever. Caves of Coileos. I can, I'll say it right eventually. Three mana, Molten Rain. Alright, well, it's not the worst. Um, not too scary given that I have an Aether Vial. It's a little, if this is, this, I'm assuming this is a lane destruction deck, which is. If it is, it's super weird to be running Noble Hierarch. You usually don't like to run Noble Hierarch in your lane destruction decks, but I'm guessing that's what it is. Well, I'll put down an Aether Vial. I got two Aether Vials going, so I'm not too worried. I mean, it wasn't a good draw for me, but it's not the worst thing ever. We'll see what else he has. Oh, more land, so he's got a lot of land. Bloodbraid, that's fine. So yeah, it is, uh, and he hit another stone rain effect, that's fine. So it is more or less what I thought. All right. Down to 14. I mean, he's doing a good job getting me low. Obviously has a super, super strong draw. All right. Draw another, another Aether Vial. Well, that's actually really bad at this point, but I think I put it in anyway. Um, I probably tied Hollow him on upkeep. I think that's probably the best move. It doesn't feel great, but okay. Yeah, I think it's I think it's worth it. Keep him off of anything too scary. He hasn't shown me anything that scary, but want to make sure. I'll take the beats from Blood Raid. I don't really care that much. All right, I get to take a card. I get to take the Blood Raid. What else do you have? Just land? Alright, seems good. Well, it's not doing a whole lot here. That's a good sign. You can attack in with the Blood Raid for four, but I'm going to get to kind of barf creatures onto the board next turn. Let's just take it. 
Okay, four, three, short. Passes, passes, and I think, I think I want this one to stay at two, which feels a little weird, but I have, oh, I know what I should have done. Probably should have upped it to three, but some, put something in with it. Anyway, let's say no. Let's see, so this one, yes. Obviously this one's yes. We get another land. That's not the worst. I could literally play all of my creatures this turn if I want to. Let's go to attack. Breaks that, sure. Only has lands in hand, so I don't know why he went to break that. Let's go to attack. Let's attack on in. Takes two, short. Um, I'll play down Thalia. Pass turn. Does tap down my ghost quarters, which is a little unfortunate. We'll see if he top decks anything good. If he just top decks another land, I think we're in good position. If he top decks other things, we could be in trouble. Goes to attack. Attacks in. I think I just take four here. Doesn't feel great, but I think that's okay. I don't have another first striker, so yeah, let's just take. That seems fine. Okay. He has four, five mana, all right. Was he after five mana? All right. Um. Well, don't think this actually stops any of the stuff. But I well, may as well put my stuff in. Yeah. All right. He's got his platinum Empyrean. Right. I guess I should have had him resolve first. I think at this point, I might take them all up. No, you know what? I'll leave one at two, one at three. I guess, no, let's leave two at three and one at two. I think that makes the most sense because I'm probably going to want one to four eventually. Okay, what do I reveal? Planes. Hey, that doesn't do any damage. Another one of those. Oop, I should have done that probably. Well, it doesn't affect too much, but let's get rid of that, just because I have plenty of lands now. Okay. Well, we're in a little trouble now. We're probably going to lose. So that's, that explains maybe why this deck is so weirdly built. No, it doesn't really. This is a very strange build of this deck. But I get, so it's like Platinum Empyrean plus a Stone Rain deck, which doesn't seem that weird to me. But yeah, I don't know. I don't like Noble Hierarch. I think they're better off with the uh, Utopia Sprawl line that most of the decks take. But I think this is fine. Okay. We got, we got a little Aether Vial flooded, but that's all right. Land tapped short. Did you draw something good? I mean, top decking Madcap Experiments was certainly good. I do have to block something here. If he attacks all, it's easy. If he attacks, he just attacks with that one. Interesting. I guess I could block everything here. Um, I could block two things here. Don't want to give him back that. Could get rid of these two. That wouldn't be a huge deal. Even on Arbiter. Could also block with Arbiter and, and Dark Confidant. I definitely have to block with something at this point, just because he could have a bolt in hand, or he could, I don't think he can have a bolt in hand, actually. I think he's revealed stuff. Oh, the revealed zone is now worthless. All right, I'm just going to close all this revealed stuff. Um, yeah, I think I double block. It doesn't feel great. It's a little risky to get rid of the Dark Confidant, because he's my extra draw. And I could do Thalia. This, like, the thing about Thalia is there's nothing he can't do right now. But Dark Confidant's also a little risky for me, but I can kill it off later probably, so I think this is fine. Alright, get rid of that.
Okay. This one can go up by one. This one should not. This one should not. What do I reveal? Flicker Wisp, good. What do I draw? Thought not. Perfect. All right, well, I'm down to two. It's a little bad. I mean, I could flick with Tide Hollow. Let's play. Play land. I'm not sure Flicker Whisp being Tide Hollow really helps very much. It's like, I could do that and then I could take that with uh, Thought Knot, but then by the time he comes back in, he's not going to have anything anyway. Alright, let's just pass. That's fine. Thought not. All right. Cute. Well, thank you for the dragon. He has that, and he has a land that I guess he could cycle. Okay, I guess I'll let him go through the rest of it. Cycles land, sure. I think we're gonna lose this game one. I actually think I don't think this is that bad a matchup, but yeah, this game one's gonna be a little rough. Um, I can bring in a little bit of. Actually, do I? Yeah, I can bring in a little bit of artifact enchantment type hate. Tax in with that. That seems fine. This doesn't have trample or anything. I right, go to block. Let's block here. All right, just because I don't want to die. Okay, um, I could flicker with this turn. Like I could flicker with this away, and I think I don't. I don't want to do that yet. And I, I guess I only want to do that. No, his life total can't change, so I can't like get him low without doing that either. Do I want to bring in flicker with now? It doesn't feel that useful now, so let's not. Use Aether Vial's ability. No. Use Aether Vial's ability. No. Use Aether Vial's ability. No. Okay. Good. Another Tide Hollow Sculler. Well, his life total can't change, so I guess I just pass. me. Is there anything I can do to stop that? Not really. It's like I can flicker with something in response, but can't do anything to stop it, so he's got it. All right, well, that was super bad luck. Um, just most of the way through my deck didn't hit a path. Or like more, more than a quarter through my deck didn't hit a path. Um, maybe I don't actually have Artifact Hate, huh? I just have Sturdy Silence, which doesn't work against him. Pithy Needle doesn't work against him. Nothing that's too good against him, I guess. Alright, well that's a little unfortunate, so... Yeah, what I'm getting from both of the first two is that it probably makes sense to have some kind of artifact hate in here, other than Stony Silence. Stony Silence is good against the real artifact decks, but it's not very good against this guy. Um, other than his combo, his deck doesn't seem that strong, and we have pretty good answers to his combo. Uh, the, the land destruction really did almost nothing to us. It feels like a super good matchup, but obviously... We didn't have any chance there. We just needed to get the path, and then we needed to get things like Tide Hollow going out a little... Well, I guess it couldn't got out any earlier. He just he top-decked the thing he needed. Um, so, a little unlucky, but it does happen. Sometimes you get a little unlucky. I think this is probably good enough. It's not totally ideal, but I think I'll keep it. 
I'll probably lead on Temple. It sucks that I don't have a way to play Tide Hollow yet. Maybe I should lead on Coilos because it's probably more likely that I draw another white black lane than it is that I draw Thought Knot. Alright, that's fine. I mean, that is probably one of the strongest things you could play against me. I should have started white black. Well, I guess at this point, Tide Hollow is just not even that worth it. I do have the paths for his guys, though, so he needs to beat me in a pretty straight up fight. Okay, so he does run the Utopia Swell package, because that's way better than the Noble Hierarch package. Um, he should be running Arbor Elves instead of Noble Hierarchs if he's running Utopia Swell. But I don't know. He might be, Maybe he's just running both. That feels really high on Mana Dorks for this type of deck, especially if you're also running Utopia Swell. But maybe it's just like a one of. Alright, well, I screwed up a little bit. I probably should have led on Tide Hollow, but that's fine. Okay. What you got? What you got? Alright, lane destruction, blood moon. Sure. Um, well, that does put me in a hard position. I guess I should have put down Ghost Quarter first so I could Ghost Quarter my own thing. You got an Arbiter, can't cast it. Alright. Well, this might just be a non game. Oh, God, these both draws have just been like absurdly lucky for my opponent. Although, I guess this draw he hasn't actually done anything useful to me, so it's not too scary. Oh, he had it, of course. He had all three pieces, like basically the three best cards against me. He had all of them in hand. Yes, that's what happened. All right, right, we'll put in Aether Vial. Uh, we still are not totally dead, but that is about, wow. I mean, it's hard to lose a match like this and not feel anything but like the RNG gods are smiling upon my opponent because basically no magic was played here. That was just like, what happens if you top deck? Oh, he had two copies of it, wow. So even if I had the destruction, it wouldn't have mattered, wow. I mean, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Ah, God, guys. There's just nothing anybody could ever do. Well, I got one of my basic blacks. Unfortunately, what I needed was a basic white, and then I'd probably be in the game. But I can play my basic black. It gives me black mana. Um, but then I just have to pass, because I need the basic white. I run more basic, basic white than basic black. I think I run two planes, one swamp, but... But, yeah, Still not a lot of either. So, when, the Blood Moon's pretty hard for my deck, but, uh, yeah, I... God, I guess I should, I would, I mean, Ghost Quarter was not what I should have played first. I didn't expect this deck to be a Blood Moon deck. It doesn't seem like a particularly, I mean, I guess it is a Ponza deck with this guy, but it's not a very good Blood Moon deck in general. Okay, Arbor Elf, that's fine. I get, I can plus this. I'm not totally dead. I get a couple more draw steps, but I really need basic white mana to have them mean anything. All right. Being at two life is pretty rough. Cycles a land short. Attacks with both. I'll put a guy in. Put an Arbiter in. Let's block here. Short. I think I got a plus to put in Flicker Wisp next. Like I said, it's, I'm kind of like hoping to hit path. No, nope, not not a not a white mana, so I can't path. Um, Attacks with both. All right, sure. Flicker wisp. Flicker here. Okay, well, yeah, I guess that does win. I say uh, the reason he couldn't do it before is, is, is technically a braid. Well, that was not a good game. I, I said good game and good luck to my opponent. He didn't say good luck to me, and he definitely had all. He took a hundred percent of the luck that game. Basically, both. Oh God, that's really not a bad matchup for us. That was just the luckiest, luckiest draw I've ever seen, and our sideboard is not super good against him. So, oh God, that that was just painful. Well, hopefully this one will. Clean out our brain from that loss. We can't go 5-0 anymore. Um, I can't believe we beat Hollow 1 and then lost to the Jankfest. Um, that was a little bit crazy. A little bit bad luck. Uh, if we just draw... If he draws a million Blood Moons and we draw no Path to Exile, so we will lose that eventually. That's the way that one goes. That's all right. We'll do better this time. I'll say hi and good luck to this person too. Hopefully he'll also be a good matchup. I mean, the, the thing that feels really bad about that is the fact that we had a super good matchup, and we lost it anyway. This is a risky keep, but um, unless he has Thoughtseize, I'm pretty good, or Duress, he does. 
Well, now this is a terrible keep and I regret my life decisions. Uh, taking Aether Vial is 100% the correct move here. Now I need to top deck land. I mean, this is slowing him down too, but I definitely... It's possible I should have mulliganed. It looked really like a really good hand, so I didn't want to. But... But yeah, on the draw it's a little risky against somebody who could have discard. I mean, it's not going to hurt us too bad because of the Concealed Courtyard, but we'll see what our opponent's up to. Maybe Marty Pyromancer? Nope. Tarmogoyf already, alright. He has pretty close to an optimal hand for him, I'm sure. Um, this is a tough one, so I could try to put down... So I could just like path or something and say, hey, you gotta show me what you got. I could put in Leonin Arbiter, it's at least valuable and it turns on my path for next turn pretty well. I could put in Displacer. Uh, Displacer just straight up blocks the Tarmogoyf if he doesn't have removal, but given his deck, he probably does. I think I'm actually going to go with the Leonin Arbiter. Turns on my the upside of path, um, and he's the one I actually care probably least about losing out of the ones I have in play right now, so there's that. This is a pretty big up. Fatal Push? Inquisition, sure. Well, if he doesn't take path, I can still path his Tarmogoyf or whatever next turn. He does take the paths, so he doesn't want me pathing that, sure. What else does he have? Fatal push... Some kind of removal, or just another... just a scavenging ooze, alright. Well, he didn't actually discard any creatures, so he can't eat any creatures. So that doesn't seem like a big deal. Come on, land off the top. Alright, that's pretty good. It's a little sad that he got my path, but... So he can't... he can't get everything. See what he has. I can determine whether I can reasonably attack in based on that. Tireless tracking can go to the graveyard. I think it makes his turmoil bigger. No, it doesn't. Um, I guess we... he already had a creature in there? Oh, it exiles it. Um, so I could attack, but that will make his turmoil bigger. So I guess I just sit back. The only other thing he had was a land. I'll make him have it, basically. If he attacks with a turmoil, I'm going to snap off the block and hope that the draw step wasn't a removal. Doesn't have any creatures to eat out. I probably wouldn't double block. I might double block the Termogoyf, I guess. No, nope. he showed me what he got. He had Field of Ruin, sure. Um, that means he can put a land in the graveyard and grow his Termogoyf. He had to show me that, so now I know not to... If I, I could kill the Termogoyf by double blocking, but I, if the Termogoyf attacks, I'd probably just take it. Okay, goes to attack. All right, you got it. Get in for one extra damage, sure. Um, doesn't really hurt me too bad. I guess I get white. Oh, I can't pay for my own thing. Yeah, good call. I guess it does put me in a really hard position now. Come on, something I can play. Nope. Nope. I guess he's in a better position than me just because of his lane base. Well, that's a little unfortunate for me, I guess. Man, the, the discard really hurt me. All right, he played that, so I don't know about the last card in hand. Presumably he's just getting in for four. If he attacks with both, I'll do the trade, I guess. Well, just, just in trade mode, and he's winning the race right now. There is a point at which I'll have to stop racing. He hasn't shown me that point yet. There's some point at which that will be the case. Oh my god, come on. Oh god, gee, really? Oh. Yeah. Alright. Man, if we had an Aether Vial right now, we would have won this game by now. Alright, I'm gonna keep racing. Maybe I should, maybe I should just hold him back. But I think he's just gonna swing in and draw an extra card if I don't keep swinging in, so... Pays cost, sure. What the heck is he... Is it Collected Company? Like, what is he playing here? Okay, tapped. He tapped a bunch of stuff and then passed turn. I I don't get it. Double black. Gets to kill my guy, sure. Well that's a good draw. Um five, sure. Now we can eat two, so I pretty much have to take all of this and go to one. Alright, going to one. You got it. Take me to one. Yeah, no, I see it. You get to take me to one. 
Oh, to two, rather. I thought it was to one. Big draw. All right, we got it. Well, um, his hand disruption was good. I mean, that's the bottom line. Oh, God, I, this deck is actually a hard matchup for us. He's come in, uh, but we basically, given what he played, we probably shouldn't have lost, but geez. Yeah, I guess I kept a risky hand. That was my fault for keeping a risky hand. Um, what do I take out to make room for these? There's definitely some things worth taking out. Stringle. This guy's not quite as good because some of his threats are big. Their confidants are at their strongest. So these are pretty good. The Arbiters, he does a lot of land searching. Gotta have the removal. I think I keep an Aether Vial. Um, no, I don't want to go down to Displacer. Probably go down to Flicker Wisp or Blade Splicer. Let's go down to Flicker Wisp. I think that's fine. Anything else that's good against him? Not really. Maybe the the relics could be worth it just to go to the graveyard. Maybe as like a one of. I don't want to go too heavy on them. What do I go down for them? Could go down like a Thalia. I mean, the bottom line is he's just has, he has a ton of spot removal, so he'll just remove the Thalia to get down his uh, other cards. All right, um, land heavy, but I think it's fine. All right, well let's turn to thought not and see if that's good enough. Much better land situation here. A little bit of a worse hand, but I mean, oh, thought sees you got it. Okay, so we can't take thought not here. That's interesting. So that's what it'll do, obviously. All right, well, continues to having good hands. If he had the Inquisitions like he had last time, would not have been so easy. But when you don't have Inquisitions, like it's uh, it's very easy. Oh god, do I do Thalia or Dark Confidant? Let's do Dark Confidant. I want to make him answer it. Otherwise, I'll get a lot of value. I can do Thalia next turn. Maybe I should have done Shambling Vents turn one just so I could have tied Hallowed turn two. would have been better, but couldn't know. Removal. Nope, he has his own Dark Confidant. Sure. Not the worst. All right. Get to draw. I get. Not the worst either. Aether Vials. Not terrible. So I could play... I'm going to attack in. Oh, he's going to take the trade. All right, sounds good to me. I think I... I think I Thalia here, and I think I Shambling Vents so that I can... Well, I guess I could do Arbiter next turn no matter what. Well, I guess maybe it's better to just get the Aether Vial going. Oh, I can't do that. I'm dumb. I needed to play Aether Vial first. <laughs> All right. I haven't played that much recently. I'm definitely feeling that. He has two untaps. Time to That's fine. All right, sure. Land. Tempting to put out Leon and Arbiter here. Also tempting to put out. I want to put out Eldrazi Displacer. I wish I had one more mana. But what are you going to do? Okay. I think that one he has to remove, but he probably has removal. He goes to 16. Also means I have currently a bigger clock than him. Um, I, I can swing for 5 if he doesn't play anything. He has taps two inquisition. Yeah, it's not the worst. Take take your pick. Don't doesn't really matter to me. Well, it takes it takes tight hollow. Not the worst. Hey, right, another tremagoyf. That's fine. I can blink both of them down per turn if I want to. It's in. Take that much. Sure. All right. My turn, my draw, thought not. Well, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I think it makes sense here. Especially because you got rid of my other one. Let's see what you got. Tireless tracker, all right, seems good. Played on this. Let's pass turn. 
We'll see what he does. We'll see what he top decks to. If he top decks well, I could be in trouble. I mean, I could even take 8 here and not care that much is the thing. Like, I don't care that much about taking 8 here. Like, what's he going to take me to? 6? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, my turn. Ghost quarter. Attack all. Alright, he goes to 5, alright, sure, last turn, let's see what he does. Okay, goes to attack. Okay. Okay. Yep, he sees it. All right, we got there. Oh, that was not as easy as I would have liked it to be. Um. Yeah, maybe I should just go down all the wasteland string. I guess they kill they kill Bob's, they kill tireless trackers early, like turn one or two. They're not bad in the matchup. I'm only running two right now. I think they're fine to keep in. They're they're the ones that I'm like, they don't kill the Tarmogoyf, and the Tarmogoyf are the biggest issue he's shown me. Um, but I think that's I think this is pretty much fine. All right. I mean, I think it's a keep. It's definitely not a good hand, but I think it's a keep. Yeah, I think I keep it. He probably just takes it. Uh, I don't know what he would take this time. Taking Aether Vial might just be better to take Dark Confidant or Tie Hollow at this point. Nope, just uh, he doesn't even have turn one hand disruption, or at least doesn't play it. Well, with Thought Knot, Eldrazi Temple is a slightly more interesting thing to do. I could hold off on Tide Hollow. Um, if I don't go a colored land here, I'm going to have to wait on Tide Hollow until I can get Aether Vial going. But I'm going to get Aether Vial going pretty quick, and I can do uh, Dark Confidant turn two. So I think that's actually fine. I think I'm going to just do this on the off chance that I get the second Eldrazi Temple. I can slam him there. Um, not likely, but you never know. Scavenge use short. Seems good. Let's tick that up. That worries me a little bit that he has removal. I mean, I could play it slow. I could slam Shambling Vent and pass. Or I could play Concealed Courtyard Dark Confidant. Probably better to keep the pressure up. It's a little, little, I'm a little not sure about which one's better. But let's, let's do that. And then he can d use removal next turn if he has it to get rid of the Dark Confidant. But if he doesn't, I can Thought Knot plus Tide Hollow next turn and get a lot of stuff out of his hand. And I guess he could kill my land here. I think I take here. I think I want to keep my Bob alive unless he wants to kill it. Um, he, might, he might want to fill the Ruin here if he doesn't have anything else. I don't know what he has. He does feel the rune here. That's interesting. Sure. So that does slow me down. I'll get a planes, I guess. It doesn't really matter. I think planes is going to be more important. And he also has fatal push. Well, I guess I should have traded. I didn't know for sure. All right. Let's uh, let's take that bad boy up. Then I have to ask myself, oof, oh god, that was a bad draw. Oh, what do I want to do here? Do I want to Flicker Wisp here? Flicker Wisping here doesn't do a lot is the problem. It's like, I could Flicker Wisp. I think I say Flicker Wisp to Flicker Wisp his guy a couple turns from now. Um, in which case, I definitely shouldn't have played this lane. I should have played this lane, so that was just a huge mistake. I think I just tied Hollow on upkeep. Yeah, I think that was a huge mistake. I don't know why I did that, because otherwise I could play Thought Knot next turn. 
Oh, and I meant to do this on draw step. Well, that was another huge mistake. Um, all right, especially if he's going to put something in, I'll do this. Meant to do it on draw step, but I guess doing it now is fine too. Okay, so that's actually kind of good for me because that means I get to exile whatever he has forever. He doesn't get it back. He has another removal, three Lilianas, and a Tarmogoyf. Well, the Liliana could be a little annoying, although I don't think it's very annoying. Tarmogoyf is probably the most annoying. Oh, Knight's Whisper is pretty annoying too. I'm going to take Tarmogoyf though. All right. Seems fine. Oh, I also, why didn't I play Aether Vile if I was going to do that? All right, whatever. I'm just playing, mis I'm misplaying all over the place this game. I deserve to lose. I guess he doesn't have the lands to play Liliana yet either. So it's not so bad, or, or that one for that matter. Yeah, you can eat one guy. You can eat two guys, I guess. Go up to a 4-4, four, four. not the worst. Uh, untapped lane would actually not be bad here. I get... Yes, I definitely want to raise that to three. I get Blade Splicer. Oh, it's not the worst either. So now I have a choice. I can either reset Scavenging Ooze or I could flicker with. I mean, what if I was flicking Wisping Blade Splicer? I should do it right now. That way, I have two, three, three golems on his turn. I guess that's not true. I can always block with Blade Splicer and then flicker it. Maybe that's better. Yeah, that's probably best. I'm going to do that, I think. I think that's my plan unless he... I mean, what he has right now isn't that scary, but he could draw something scary. Okay. Got a blue mana. Well, it's not a black mana. Unless what's going to draw for turn two. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Let's flicker wisp. Flicker blade splicer. Okay. I think I will take it up to four. You know. You know what? Let's play down a Mirren Crusader. The second Aether Vial. Let's get in with Flicker Wisp. Okay. Draw step. He gives up. Hey, we got there. He knew it was coming. He was like, draw a step, you're going to put in Thought Knot and take my best card. Sweet. Well, that one, even, wow, I misplayed so much that game. I feel embarrassed. I feel like the game before I played well and he got lucky. This game I played poorly and I must have gotten a little lucky because I don't think this is a good matchup for us. So, I mean, that's the way magic works. We had a 70% matchup in game two and we lost it. And we had a probably 30% matchup in this one and we won it. What are you going to do, right? It's crazy. All right. Well, we're 2-1. Feeling pretty good. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Okay, I'm back, and I'm going to try to be less grumpy. I feel like I'm getting a little grumpy in my the times I lost. We're 2-1, which is pretty good. Um, the, the wins have been close. The loss was not that close. My opponent was legitimately a little bit lucky. But um, I think post-board, I, I said we're like 70-30 against that deck. And I think we are game one, but post-board, when they're bringing, bringing in Blood Moons, um, or maybe they just have Blood Moons main board too, I don't know. Blood Moons are a little hard for us, so probably, probably not quite as good against that matchup as I said. But yeah, we beat a couple of really good matchups too, like uh, um, Jund, it was uh, game three and we won that, and then even even through a ton of misplays by me, and then game one, uh, match one was against Black Red Hollow One, and uh, yeah, we took that one too. So on to match number three, let's see how it goes. I say hi, good luck. So far, I think I've said that every time and nobody's actually responded to me. This feels like a keepable hand. Not the best hand I've ever seen, but I think it is keepable. Oh, he said same to me. Oh, well, this guy's friendly. That's nice. So this is this is the friendly league, so you would hope that they'd be a little friendly, but you never know. Um, we can tie all our turn two. Probably doing nothing turn one. I think I'm just going to slam Shambling Vent. A little ways away from actually activating it. 
We have the Eldrazi Temple. If we top deck a Thought Knot, we could get that out turn three. Underground River, interesting. I wonder if it's a deck that plays a lot of removal. Oh, and we can do Thought Knot turn three if we want to. Well, we probably will. Let's start off with Hollow One. Okay, well, we get to see what's up right away, which is kind of nice. Ah, that's interesting. So he kills it, but then I, because he did it that way, I still get to take something from his hand. He has Thought Knots too. Elder Deep Fiend, Elder Deep Fiend, Chalice that it's going to play on one, probably. I mean, I could take Chalice. That's the only thing he can play anytime soon. Probably better to take Thought Knot and then Thought Knot his Reality Smasher. I don't care that much about his Chalice. If I really did, I could always flick your Wisp it too. Let's take Thought Knot. He hasn't shown me any low drops. So this is a deck I haven't seen, but it looks like... Oh, he must have top decked something. Oh, he just chalices on one. That's fine. It does turn off my path and, and also my... Uh, turns turns off a couple things. Um, I also would have to Ghost Quarter myself to Flicker Wisp right now, which is a little bit of a pain, but... I'll probably draw more land. Well, this is going to be pretty good. Thought not. Let's see what he's got going on over there. Well, he's got double Reality Smasher, so now if he does top deck... Um... Uh, he has, he'd have to top deck specifically Temple. But if he top decks Temple, I could be in trouble. I can take the other one next turn with my other Thought Knot. He doesn't top deck Temple, alright. Makes it a little better. Well, Caves means I can Flicker Wisp at some point. Like I said, I could Flicker Wisp Chalice and then Path something if I want. But I'm not going to let it get that far if I can help it. Um, let's just start by Thought Knot. Chalice is particularly bad against me. Alright. I'll take the other Reality Smasher. He's left with a couple Emerge creatures that he can't currently play. Feeling pretty good about this. I think game one is going to be a win. And I'm going to need to think about how to beat him. He gives up. He's not even going to take it any further than that. Alright, so. Um, it's Eldrazi versus Eldrazi. Pleasant Alliance isn't the worst. That could be fine. Spellskite, I guess, could change the target of his thing. That doesn't help very much. I guess that's pretty bad. Pretty much running at stock, I think. I don't think Relic does much. I don't think Pithing Needle does too much. Um, I don't think that does too much. Chalices are annoying. That's that's the thing that's like a little going to get me a little bit. The stuff he showed me was all Eldrazi, so I don't think things like Mirren Crusader are worth it. He's like Eldrazi Emerge. Uh, Wasteland Stranglers are not good if that's what he's playing, just because minus three minus three isn't that good. Although, I mean, it's not the worst thing ever, but that's this is a consideration that I could just cut it for like Mirren Crusaders or something that's like a little a little bit more aggressive. But he, I mean, he could be running some smaller Eldrazi. I just don't, I don't know. He didn't show me anything smaller. And processing with the Flicker was playing is also kind of cool to get rid of stuff. There's not a lot to put in is the problem. It's like, this guy's not good. He's mostly a creature deck. I don't think Spellskite is terribly good. I, mean, I guess it's fine. He does have like things like Dismember that I could grab, although Dismember does kill that, so it's not as good. I'm going to go down one Wasteland Strangler because I'm not sure it's that good and up one Mirren Crusader. I think the rest of the stuff can stay. Alright, and this looks pretty fine to me. Let's keep. I'm not sure it's a good hand, but it's not the worst. Got two and one, two, and probably three plays. Okay. Well, we can't play a Chalice on one yet. We're going to get an Aether Vial down, so that's a good first step. Although he probably, I mean, he probably took the chalices out, I would guess. They're not particularly good against me. I mean, they would have been able to, if he had gotten up to two mana turn one somehow, he could have stopped either by, which would have been annoying. All right, so he does have three drop out drives. He's probably just, yep, yeah, reshaper is what I was figuring. All right. Let's put a counter on that. Well, 
Um, I could play my 3-drop Eldrazi, or I could just put down Thalia Guardian with Raven. I think I'm just going to Thalia here. She actually blocks better. I can always put down the other one next turn. This is a thought not. Nope, it's a Eternal Scourge. Sure. Short. Nope, no tax. Got it. Seems good. Well, let's up our counter. Yep. Go to three. Put in a Ghost Quarters, probably. It doesn't really matter. I could also do Caves. They're about the same. Do I have a preference? Not really. Um. I think I'll displace her here. Three caves is actually more important to play here. And then next turn on three, we're gonna have some more options. And have, having Flicker Wisp up is gonna be really nice too. He could get in for three here if he wants to. Maybe he has Smashers. Doesn't look like it, at least he didn't play it. I think we take three here. I think taking three is fine. Next with both, sure. Okay. A mooch creature. One, two. Oh, he just uh, dismembers. Sure, I guess that's fine. Doesn't really matter. You got it. Play another Eternal Scourge. Short. Seems fine. All right. Yeah, let's up that to three. All right. Um, I don't think I need all of my mana this turn. I don't think. Because I'm going to have to tap three things to play here, basically. So I might as well just do Shambling. I don't have a one drop right now. I think I'm just going to put her in. It's a 3 1 for a strike. A 3 2 for a strike. We pass. And I'll figure I can instant speed Flicker with something if I need to. Okay. Oh. You got me. I mean, it does let him attack in this turn, I guess. Gets in with both. I think I'm okay with taking both here. I think I'm going to win the long game, so I'm not super worried about it. Okay. Let's leave that at three. I think three is the more likely one to have it at. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Definitely attacking with at least that. I could attack him with her. Maybe I leave her back. You know what? This puts a lot of pressure on him. I can take him to one here, can't I? Unless he has a removal in hand. I can take him to one? That feels pretty good. Ooh, do I do that? Hmm. I think I do. Um, oh, I, did I wait too long? No, I, um, oh yeah, I did wait too long. Well, not really. I can attack with everybody but her. Okay, no blocks for you. Okay, take you to four. So now he has to, now he's priced into kind of trying to kill me this turn.
He gives up. We won. We won the match. So we were at least 3-1. We're at least breaking even on play points. That's that's nice. Um, uh, that, that one, I'm not sure his deck is that good. Maybe it's just not a good matchup for him. But that felt pretty good for us. Um, I'm not going to say see you next time because I think I'm just going to jam the next one right now. Uh, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to chain them all together into one video. Hopefully I wasn't super whiny for a lot of them. I feel like the less I play Magic, the more whiny I get about it, if that makes sense. When I play a lot, it's like I'm used to winning and losing, and I'm like I'm in that mindset. It's like, it's just a game. It's fine. I actually have pretty good records in most of the stuff I do, so it's not nearly as bad as I think, and I just kind of like able to take the bumps a little bit. And then when I come, leave and come back, I'm like, oh, I played so much Magic in my life. I'm supposed to be good at this. Why am I losing all the time? My deck always should have a positive matchup against my opponent's deck, even when it obviously shouldn't. And I, I don't know when I when I'm removed from that afterwards, I think very clearly about things, and I think about the, the things that went well and the things that didn't. And it's almost why I like to have a closing thoughts on a lot of these because I think much more clearly an hour after it than I do like five minutes after it, which is why I'm not a very not as good a commentator as I would like to be. I get I get too emotionally involved in the immediate like, oh crap, my guy just got, died. Oh good, I just killed somebody. It's like it's a little too immediate. Um, well, I don't think this is a particularly good hand, but we do have a Leonin Arbiter plus Path and Ghost Quarters, and we do have a turn two Tide Hollow, so I think it's a keep. Um, we can even double Leonin at some point. Uh, if he's a deck that searches a lot in terms of searching his library, which he might be, this could be pretty good. Um, probably, uh, is this, it's hard to tell what this is, Welding Jar. It's hard to tell whether this is a combo deck or some kind of more normal aff affinity deck. I would think combo from what he's played so far, but it's hard to tell. He's definitely hand dumping super, super hard. Blue mana. It's like blue artifacts, maybe? Well, this is a super fast uh, fast hand, that's for sure. Okay. Pays life. Oh, okay, so maybe it's more like normal... Well, the Welding Jar is not going to be that good against Path. I'm going to have it up as soon as next turn to use if I want to. Double Ghost Quarter feels pretty nice against this hand, too. Um, well, right now we're just passing. Hope hopefully Path will be good. Um, I could even Path early if I want to. If he plays something that's that's scary enough that I want to Path it. But we'll see what he we'll see what he plays here. Wait. Okay. Oh, I see. It's this deck. That's all right. So he's gonna get. Is this only creatures? Okay, it's only creatures. I don't really. So I could save myself a few hit points of my path here, and maybe I just don't think he is a little stuck on mana though. Mm, this is tricky. It's like pathing this guy doesn't feel bad. I think I'm better off just passing and Tide Hollowing. And then waiting till the turn after to, to deal with that stuff. Well, I got double path coming. That's pretty good. Well, let's see what he's got work going on over there. Steel Overseer seems scary. Signal Pest also seems a little scary. I guess Steel Overseer is scarier. They're about the same. It's not really much of a difference. All right, let's take... Uh, I guess Steel Overseer, he has to use more to do. Maybe that makes it less scary because I'm going to path whatever he does next turn anyway. Uh, let's take Signal Pest, I guess. That's fine. Because next turn, I'm going to play Arbiter and path whatever else he has up. Whatever he plays, which is probably Steel Overseer. Okay. Well, maybe not. Oh, yeah, it is. All right, that's fine. So I take two damage just from having his creatures swing in. It's a little annoying. I mean, I'm going to swing in with my guy and give him the opportunity to have him die. God, well, I'm not using these anyway. I still think I play one just because I could use a bunch of them next turn. I guess I'll attack in because... Oh, he could, he could regenerate it, huh? Well, I still think getting rid of the Welding Jar might not be the worst. Let's attack in and see what he does. 
A block, sure. Path to exile. All right. Second land, short. This is gone. There is one card left in hand. I don't know what it is. I feel like I should. Maybe I just don't. No, I think I just don't know what it is. He's had two draw steps since then. Okay, he has another one of those. Seems good. Turns itself into a creature just to deal a little bit of extra damage to me. Also seems good. Gets in for one. Nope. Down to 13. All right. And I lose and all the way down to 10 now. So that's not terrible. Okay. Start by attacking with both. Takes it short. Let's uh, path this guy. Let's path this guy. Let's uh, destroy this land. Let's destroy this land. All right. Seems good. And you got another land. Sure. He's gonna attack him with a zero two. Do one damage to me. Seems good. All right. I like that. Um. Land for turn. Thalia. Back in. Well, it's got lots of lands now, I guess. What does he have? What's he doing? Oh, did that do something? Wait. Oh, he just used it. To, he tapped it for me instead of attacking. Not that it really matters. Um, I think uh, I think just attacking and hoping he doesn't top deck is my best plan. And I could dart confidant here, but I don't think that's useful. Okay, he's got to top deck and then stop two of my creatures at once. So he's basically got a top deck of creature here. He does. I don't think he can actually attack in with either of them. I think he's on chump dock block to do with both, which I think just means he dies. Like, I don't think he can win from here. If he taps one, he dies, because I do six damage. Yeah, he can't tap anything, so he doesn't give me life. He doesn't do any damage off throne. Yeah, that's zero. All right. Blocks with both, gets three gen one. I'll put in another cat cleric, and you'll have to do eight damage to me in one turn somehow. It doesn't really matter which ones you block, you go to one life. You can Walding Jar one of the guys, which you probably do. Yep, seems correct. Play the one that doesn't have the potential of just magically killing me. Got there, sweet. All right, so against this deck, uh, Stony Silence comes in. I think they're doing enough artifact stuff that Stony Silence is gonna be pretty good against them. I guess that means I go down at least two Aether Vials, maybe all of the Aether Vials. Um, Pithing Needle's not terrible against a deck like this. Artifact combo is kind of what they are. Life gain is not terrible. Make you sack an attacking creature isn't terrible. These could be worth it. <clears throat> I 
I mean, maybe Sony Silence doesn't hit enough. He didn't show me that much that it hit. No, it, it definitely hits enough. Uh, I think the Sony Silences are good ads. It just it will suck if I get an Ether Vial. I mean, maybe I should just go down all of them. Just go up more creatures like Blah, Mirren Crusader. I'll I'll, put, I'll keep in one Ether Vial. I don't think this guy is terribly good. He doesn't have that many non-creatures. Putting in the Blessed Alliances are tempting. I'm not sure how good it is. Well, let's try it like this. Oh, I forgot to say hi, good luck this time. I have no idea if this is the correct sideboard plan. It feels, it's not like affinity, like affinity, you definitely bring them in. It's not quite affinity, but I think it's close enough that it, it's a good ad. Um, well, feels pretty good, but not quite enough land. I could run it anyway and hope. I think I have to mulligan it though. I think this is a better keep, although still not great. I think Path is good enough to keep on top, even though we are going to give them a land off it, but still got the Stony Silence on too if we want it, depending on what he plays. I don't think I have to Stony Silence right away. Um, Shambling Vent tapped, pass. It's quite possible Tide Hollow will be better. We'll just have to see what he does. Arcbound Ravager, short. Do I Stony Silence here? So the thing is, he's going to be able to sack this guy in response, I guess. But like, he, it doesn't do that much to him to sack him right now. I think I'm going to take whatever he has out of hand first. I think that's just better. He doesn't have particularly good attacks if I play this guy anyway. So Blood Moon or Etched Champion. Uh, I guess you could play Blood Moon with Glimmer Void. How bad does Blood Moon get me? I guess it gets me pretty bad. I guess I take Blood Moon. I don't know. Those are both actually pretty scary for me. So he probably plays Etched Champion here. And I'm going to get Displacer eventually, which doesn't feel too bad. Oh, he didn't uh, play his uh, Glimmer White. I guess he didn't need to because he's doing Etched Champion instead. Etched Champion short. And then next turn you'll have to decide how big he wants to go. No real reason to get in there. I agree. All right. Puppy, you have to leave that. You have to leave the room if you're going to do that. You're out. No. Oh, seriously, you can't be in the room and do that. I told you that earlier. You're out. Out. You gotta get out. Alright. Land for turn. Tide Hollow's not looking too good here. Let's just Stony Silence. You can Arcbound Ravager now if you want to, otherwise it ain't gonna do you much good. Seriously, no barks. Not okay. Okay. You seem to have settled down. He was being pretty good though, I will say. Like he I told him when I started recording a couple matches ago not to bark and if he did I was kick him out and really that was his first that was his first uh first time I think. Sitting here thinking about Stony Silence. Thinking about whether he wants to break it. He does, alright. He does it immediately, alright. So he just does it to make Etch Champion bigger. Got it. Etch Champion no longer has Metalcraft, but presumably will in the future. Alright. Land, he has. Oh, Master of Ethereum, that's pretty good. Alright, so he's going to get in for five here. I'm going to build a Path Master of Ethereum if I want to. Kind of hoping to hit a land here. No, Aether Vial. Okay, the one of Aether Vial is what I hit. All right, fair enough. I think he just doesn't have anything in his hand, but I'm going to do this anyway. See what he does. Oh, he does. He has cranial plating. Nice. All right. And I think I pass and see what he does.
I don't want to admit that I kept the one ether vial in. Alright, he gets to play that down. Short. Nice way to this. That seems good. I like it. He's gonna he's gonna try to get as many beats in as he can. That was a good top deck. Oh, he's not doing the last one. That's interesting. Attacks in. Path here. Okay. And then I just gotta take that, which is not a lot of damage, but it's a little bit. Go to nine. Come on, big money, big money. Well, land's not the worst. Not the best here either. Protection from all colors is a big deal. I mean, I can Flicker Wisp something. Flicker Wisp also shuts down his air stuff a little bit, but maybe not the best. Don't know whether I should get aggressive here or not. I probably should because I just can't really stop his uh, creatures, especially his 3-3. Three, three. Basically, he has a 3-3 three, three unblockable. It's going to kill me in a couple turns. But I think I'm just dead in two turns. I think I'm just going to be too slow. So get in here. I can't block the flyers anyway. We'll see what he does here. Oh, he activates it. Do they double block something? Maybe try to get Blood Moon back or something? That would be interesting. Cranial Plating doesn't really matter with this. You'd have to try to get Blood Moon back. I get a box. Oh no, he just takes it. I don't know why he did that. Alright, fair enough. One, two, three. Maldrazi Displacer. Probably too slow. The Etch Champion is really hard for me to beat. Um, I still think taking the Blood Moon was right, just because the Blood Moon would have kept me from playing anything the whole game. But it did not feel good to take when I knew this was just too big a clock. He can basically fire up two of these guys if he wants to. Yep. So he's getting in for five here, taking me to four. I mean, I don't know why he would attack with this one. That seems like a bad decision. I can I can block that one too. Hmm. Do I block here? Just stop the three damage. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. If I block here, I take five. I go to four. I can blink this next turn. I think that's fine. Still got me on a two turn clock though, so I think I'm probably just dead, but. Maybe not if I get... Oh, another Displacer. Well, that's not the worst. Maybe that's better. Is that better? I guess it's about the same. No, it's probably better. Another, another Eldrazi Displacer. So we can get in for two, but I can just block his guy. I think I need to put on the pressure if I want, if I want to have any chance to win. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... I still think I'd probably lose. Uh, not as, he does have to top deck. Uh, he's not doesn't just kill me next turn. Okay, he does slow me down. He doesn't just kill me next turn because I can one I can ghost quarter one of his guys, which I probably will, and two I can put in a flicker with to block one of his guys as well. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay, goes to get in, tax. Yeah, I think I'm just, ah, do I kill one here? Or do I take two? The thing is he can attack with two again next turn, if, even if I do this, so it really only saves me one point of damage. 
If I don't do it now, I just have to do it next turn though. Okay, go to blocks. Let's block here. I'll go to two. Okay, my turn. Draw, get a land. That's not the worst. Not the best though. Can't do everything I want no matter what. Gonna play, oh uh, actually, I definitely don't want to do that till after I attack. So I attack for seven, and I play Flicker Wisp, Flicker my, one of my lands. One, two, three, Flicker Wisp. Let's flicker this. So I have a blink effect up. Okay. That goes away. That's actually really good for me. It means he has no color of his mana, plus he lost a land. That means I guess he can only swing with one of those also. Well, let's see what he has. It's very, it's, this is going to be very, very close. I'm at two life. He's at five. I might have turned the corner. I did! I won! So we got our money back and we earned four chests. So let's open those chests. So we went 4-1. We actually did really well in this league. Uh, the last two decks we ran up against were slightly janky. Um, what would we have drawn? Anything interesting? No, just another shambling event. That wouldn't have done much. But yeah, I mean, uh, good games to my opponents. Yeah, the last two were definitely the easiest two matches. We ended up against two... Not that they're not good. They're kind of like fringe playable uh, modern decks in my opinion. Um, I haven't really ever seen anybody play this Emerge one. I thought it was really neat. Um, and obviously it does have a lot of really powerful cards in it. So it doesn't surprise me that people are trying it out. Just kind of like blue-black. I mean, um, Elder Deep Fiend is just known to be really powerful. I'm a little surprised it doesn't see more modern play. It does obviously sees a little bit in this guy's deck. But um the other one I tried to make work, and I also had bad experiences with it in Modern, so I think it's just a little bit weak. Uh, that's the, oh god, what's it called? Mindbender? Something like, not mind, is that, uh, whatever, the, the Eldrazi that gets to take two cards out of your hand. It's just, it's a little too slow for the taking two cards out of your hand to be useful in Modern, and one of those cards has to be like four mana or more, or three mana or more or something, so it's like a lot of times it only hits one, because a lot of Modern decks are just super low to the ground. Uh, so I found that one not to be that good. Um, Distended Mindbender, that's the one. Uh, but the, but Elder Deep Fiend is super, super good, and I just, I mean, it's, it's just a slightly worse kind of our deck, almost. Uh, but yeah, we beat that one, and then the, uh, I've seen this Throne of the God Pharaohs, uh, Artifact Aggro deck before. Yeah, it had a pretty powerful version of it, pretty good cards in it, but yeah, it just couldn't, uh, just couldn't quite compete with us. We were able to stabilize a little bit too hard, so... So good. Well, that was good. Um, we beat Jund and uh, Black Red um, Hollow One as well, and then we lost to a Blood Moon uh, Imperion deck, uh, whatever it's called, Madcap Experiments combo. I I don't think like I said. I almost think some of these matchups should have been a little flipped in terms of how good they were. Like I don't think we should have owed that one. I think. I, rethinking about it, I think we we might not be favored in it completely, but I, it depends if he has Blood Moons in the main or the side. But yeah, Blood Moon is a little hard for us to beat, and that would have been pretty strong against us. But yeah, sweet. Well, thank you guys. Oh, I'm, I'm going to say thank you guys for watching. We need to jump over and actually open these chests. All right, let's open the chests. Chest number one. Ten play points, not great, not the worst. Then two worthless commons nobody cares about. Chest number two. What do we, got? What do we have? Oh my god. What the fuck? I mean, holy shit. Liliana the Veil? Isn't that- that's still like worth 50 bucks, right? Uh... 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 Goatbot? Just... I'm gonna go check. Liliana the Veil is... Yeah, 50 is the cheapest version you can get, which is this version, I think. I think this is the $50 version. Um, sells for 52. Wow. That is, uh, that's impressive. 
and then two worthless cards. But who cares? We got literally we just got a fifty dollar card. That is crazy. I might just sell that. I mean, I kind of want to keep it, but building the full decks that user is so hard that I almost just want to sell it for ticks and buy some other deck. Oof! Wow. That's uh. Well, we already made out on these chests. Don't think you can do much better than that. We'll we'll open the next couple anyway. Um, what do we have here? Sin Potter, not particularly good. I do love Sin Potter, but not not valuable certainly. Probably a one or two cents. So that was like a total bust. And then the last chest is ten play points, two commons. Again, ten play points just isn't very much. So, but we did come out positive. Then we ended up gaining twenty play points out of playing that league, and then we got a fifty dollar card. So, as good as a fifty dollar card is, yeah. I mean that's uh, didn't have one before. But now I have a Liliana, uh, and I am pretty excited about having a Liliana. Can you get it? Can you get any more for her anywhere else? I checked the the, the site I usually check, and and she was fifty. I wonder if she is in other places. Oh, this one might not list it. No, no, this one should list it. Liliana of the Veil buy price. This one says slightly over fifty, so this one's slightly better than. Um, then the other one, and then what about this one? Liliana of the Veil price is buy list set, yeah, fifty dollars and fifty cents. That is, uh, wow. Well, even though we didn't 5-0 this time, we only 4 one uh, still, we did, uh, better than, better than previous times. So, checking one last site to see, to see what this one has it at. Lillian of the Veil. This one has one bot saying they're going to pay you 57 for it, but they don't have any tickets to buy it. The highest one that has tickets to buy it sell, is buying it for 50.50, 51.50. That's, that's the best price I've seen so far. 51.50 ticks for a league that we, that spent 8 ticks to enter. Not too shabby. That is, uh, that's pretty exciting. All right. Well, I'm going to shut this down now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Peace.